What's up, guys? Jamie Bedingfield here. This is Too Many Words, my podcast, a place for the creative and more than slightly odd week three with that tagline, and I'm still liking it. If you are first timers, welcome. If you are regulars, thumbs up, guys. And as usual, I love hearing how much you enjoy my anecdotes and my guests and my shared hatred for grocery stores. Uh, I have an awesome show for you guys uh, today or tomorrow or tonight, dusk, driving somewhere, chilling in the house, backyard. I Somebody told me the other day that they like listening to me while walking through the park. So if you are listening to me while in a park, good job getting outdoors. It's summer. It's the time. The time to get outdoors and do things and get tired so you're ready to stay indoors and eat. That's at least my cycle. And um, yes, but back to the show. I have an awesome show for you guys. I had fun um, with this one, guys. I have uh, Chris Blue on the show, and he talks about his uh, journey and the presidents of the United States and how it led him to creating uh, kid music. And it's just... It's a good talk, fun times, really cool dude. So uh, tune into that in a bit. I'm going to do, you know, the self-talk and then answer some questions and, you know, the little routine that I do. And also a fun treat alongside Chris Blue is a song from his new um, Casper Baby Pants album, Away We Go. And uh, the song is called Banana Bread. And we also get into talking about the song and how it came to be. So, like I said, good show. How is everybody doing? How are you? What's new? What have you achieved? What haven't you? What are you procrastinating? What is your summer been like? I am, I'm doing good. You know, I'm looking at my summer, and I was actually scheduling talks with people looking at August, and it was for September. So needless to say, August has, you know, is wrapping up, and it's kind of catching me by surprise. The summer, I was nervous about the summer. I was nervous about changing the routine of my life, but I'm happy that I did. Me and the kids have been having a lot of fun, and though my days are long, it's been good, but... And the same breath, I got to say, I'm just not, you know, I have that voice saying like, you know, all right, summer's almost over, get it all in. That's hard. It's hard balancing life with obsession. And uh, on that note, I, you know, I'm in a different stage. And at first I didn't realize that I was in it. And it's funny because, you know, I'm, I romanticize things and I, I think into the future and I build these moments up and, you know, even though I build them up and I work towards them, I don't even, I haven't been noticing them. I've just been looking around and being like, oh, everything's different now. And uh, I have eight, no, nine publications uh, being released in the fall and more crazy stuff coming and some stuff up my sleeve and uh, a project in my ear. And, uh, you know, that's a good segue for some of that, you know self-promotion that I'm going to do. So here it goes. Um, <clears throat> the Shadow Bearers in the Geek and Sundry contest with Ink Shares. Rebecca and I are going on week three in it. And we're doing well. We're getting good feedback. And we're not that far from being in the top ten. And once we're in the top ten, we'll be on the front page. Um, so that's good. Uh, just all around. More noticeable, more votes. And the uh, you know what? I'm just having a lot of fun. I'm, you know, looking at all this different lore all over the place and books and getting inspiration and thinking of spells and Rebecca and I working with it's it's so funny because like, uh, you know, I, I often have these thoughts within myself, but, you know, working on a book with somebody, you know, I will, you know, the other day I messaged her and I was just like, I just invented a creature. And she's like, I'm doing something with orbs. And it was like, okay, this is awesome. And uh, chapter two just posted. And 
things are, I'm excited. And yes, I have my heart set on wedding and I'm stubborn. Um, but this is, this is good stuff. I'm feeling good. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, I gotta say, I'm, I'm starting to appreciate the hustle before, you know, the pace of it and, you know, just talking to different people about my projects. It all made me want to just eat my hair, but now I'm just, I'm having fun with it, honestly. And I think that's the theme of, of what I'm learning this summer and also the theme of this show because Chris is very fun. But yes, yeah, so fun. I'm having so much fun. I've been really trying to lean into that with all the shorter projects and this book with Rebecca and uh, the dystopia I'm working on. I mean, the list goes on and I'm just having fun. I'm leaning into it. I've been making different playlists, um, even more so really directing like, you know, okay, I know what the story is going to be like. Let's go through some music. I get it all queued up. I get my zone and I move on to something else. You know, I'm writing about assassin guilds and wizards and warriors with a destined path to save the world and just crazy clans in a destroyed world. I mean, it's just fun. And I, uh, I promote it. I promote fun, guys. Have some fun. And, uh, yes, so there's that, my fun speech. I did that. And then, uh, yeah, you know, I would say that, uh, and sticking with the whole fun theme, the two questions that I picked out this week, every week, I pick out two questions from my messages and, you know, answer them. And there's some particularly funny ones. Uh, so I pulled those out. And from a few months ago, or a couple months ago, some time before now, uh, Travis had written into the show saying that he got a job at a movie theater to write about what it's like working in a movie theater, but he told all his coworkers that he was doing that and people either made fun of him or didn't talk to him. And he, you know, I told him, you know, it's a perspective and that kind of thing. And so he wrote back letting me know that he has switched jobs and uh, he's working at a different movie theater now. He hasn't told anybody that he's working there for a story. And things are going quite well. And he says that he's having fun. So if you're listening, Travis, keep up the good work. Have some fun. And good luck with that novel. And definitely let me know uh, when you have information about when it's nearing its end and all that. I want to stay, I want to stay up to date. The Movie Theater Project. And then, so I got another question, and this is from uh, Zoe. It reads, Jamie, you always talk about wanting superpowers pretty much on every episode and in many of your tweets. If you were given the gift of one superpower, what would it be? Zoe, I have spent a lot of time thinking about the answer to this question, even before you answer, asked me. And uh, even though it's an it's obvious, I realize, but it's telekinesis. Yes, if I could have any power in the world, it would be telekinesis. I feel like I would be really creative with how I used it. And I would really like to move things with my mind. I could move myself with my mind. And who knows, you know, powers have a tendency to grow. So definitely telekinesis. And on that... I would say, let's go on. I'm going, you are, <clears throat> the song I'm about to play you is Banana Bread by Casper Baby Pants. And it's on the new album, Away We Go. And once the song is complete, I will be talking to Chris. I will be talking to Chris. Banana bread, banana bread. We can be banana bread. We're not pretty, but we're not dead. Banana bread. You brought us home from the grocery. We look so snappy. Put us on the countertop over there. We were so happy. Then you forgot about us. Lunch after lunch. Now we are a fruit fly covered brown and bummed out bunch. But banana bread, banana bread. We can be banana bread. We're not pretty, but we're not dead. We can be banana bread Once upon a time We were so yellow Cheery, bright and smiling A bunch of happy fellows 
Then we got forgotten, now it's almost too late. But you can still make us into something tasty to put on your plate. Banana bread, banana bread, we can be banana bread. We're not pretty, but we're not dead. We can be banana bread. We can be banana bread. Take it away, Mom. together for so long. so long we grew up on a banana tree and learned to sing this song. this song all the young bananas learned it in case they get forgotten so people don't throw them out just because they look a little bit rotten banana bread banana bread we can be banana bread we're not pretty but we're not dead we can be banana bread we can be banana bread we can be Banana bread. We can be banana bread. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Good, Jamie. How are you? Ah, doing pretty good. I'm uh, tired. I was up late last night getting, uh, I just uh, submitted a book into a contest and uh, I was up late last night getting all that ready. So, that and the sunshine we're having in Seattle, I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty tired at this point. <laughs> Yeah, is it a, is it a book con? Is it like the world's heaviest book contest, or <laughs> smallest book, or what, what attribute? Uh, what? so it's a fantasy fantasy book contest. Ah, okay. And it's uh um it's sponsored by Geek and Sundry, so fingers crossed. All right, fantasy. <laughs> yep, that's where I like to keep my head mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a rock and roll fantasy, but I uh got to I achieved it so I guess it became not a fantasy anymore it became reality yes that must have uh that must because I'm I mean I'm I'm still working towards like my I would say my big dreams but achieving them must be something pretty incredible yeah it was <laughs> um kind of incredible in both the good and the weird way um you know it was great to receive validation like i'm not crazy these songs are good <laughs> world <laughs> totally and, and then in other ways it was um sort of terrifying uh suddenly going from my main concern being you know who's going to come over tonight for a barbecue and jam <laughs> to uh how am i going to keep this you know international corporation i've suddenly created um from going off the rails. So it's uh, it's kind of disorienting. And some people, of course, land on both feet and take to it and love that kind of um, challenge. I immediately felt like it was the wrong place for me. I mean, it's really? funny, I, I'm kind of moving house right now, slowly over to an island. And uh, in anticipation of moving, I've been kind of culling through tons of you know, books, journals, photographs, videos. And um, I was shocked when I cracked open a journal from before we even made it big that kind of uh, revealed that my thought process, because I kind of thought I, I arrived at this sort of uh, sensation of wanting out in like 95 or something, but I arrived at it even before we got an offer. <laughs> I was going to uh, say when you gave me that year, yeah, that was... That was before. Well, no, we got signed in 94. Okay. Like, I think, I think was it 94? I think it was August of 94 or something like that. But um, I don't know. My point is, like, <laughs> I, I, I had really carved out a, a mental space for myself where I didn't need to be a, a big deal to feel uh, successful and satisfied. And I think when the band sort of started to ramp up and become, you know, viable as a national thing, my old sensation of having worked hard to carve out peace of mind without, you know, that, that uh, level of validation kind of 
reared its head and said, whoa, 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 man, what are you doing? You're trashing everything that we worked so hard for, you know? Um, you're, you're going off and going into the into the grist mill of, of celebrity when your real peace of mind is over here next to the fire pit and uh, with your friends. So anyway, the allure of the opportunity, of course, won out, and <laughs> I took the ride, all the while wanting out, <laughs> simultaneously with having the time of my life. So it was a real weird, conflicty kind of thing. And finally, the wanting out won over after four years, and we broke up for five years. Um, and then we got back together with a different perspective. We got back together with sort of a respectful kind of perspective where we sort of uh, appreciated our achievement in a way where we, in a way that we didn't before and got to sort of ride the, uh, I don't know, the fumes of the previous success, which was a comfortable level of success. The fumes were enough. <laughs> turns out. <laughs> hey, there's a good album title. The fumes were enough. Yeah, there you go. I was thinking book title, but I'll let you have it for an album title. <laughs> okay. Could be a book title. You can have it. You can have it. Um, anyway, so we did that phase for 13 years. And then finally last year, about almost exactly a year ago, I just decided to move on. And I've been doing the kids music thing for since 2009. And it's just become aesthetically exactly what I was looking for in my whole life. And, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. And then in the meantime, I also started doing music for meditation, uh, ambient music, and doing art again. I went to art school and really didn't know why I went to art school <laughs> and no, no concept of what I was trying to do. And about uh, two years ago, I, I found a voice with visual art, and so I'm doing that again. And so That's anyway, awesome. the rock band sort of felt like a uh, an old suit of clothes that didn't fit anymore, you know, and I kept cramming myself into it. And pretty soon the seams broke, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to get some new pants. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. There's my, like, history of Chris Ballou in, <laughs> uh, what are we in, seven minutes and eight seconds. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I got to say, as a parent, I was through the moon excited when I found out that you were doing kid music. Um, wait, wait, wait. You were through the moon or over the moon? Through it. I was through I it. I think, yeah, through it is more delighted than over the moon i think so yeah i mean because you actually have to go through the moon so like yeah it takes a lot of force to go through the moon so that's a big compliment thank you <laughs> <laughs> um well i mean and there's there's quite a bit of you know kid entertainment out there that is raiding to the nerves and um oh yeah yeah big time i mean dora oh man but uh when we we uh we had moved into the we had bought a house in uh, northern Seattle, and I was, you know, doing the whole parent map thing. And I, I saw, you know, that there was a beach con concert. Took the kids there, and they just had such a ball. And, um, you know, we've been kind of, you know, listening to your music since. Oh, that's great. A beach, was it in Kirkland? Uh, no, uh, it was uh, Richmond Beach in Shoreline. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, well, and I, I believe you, for that, you were touring for Hot Dog. Okay, yeah, that was, uh, wow, that was album number five, and I'm on album number 11 now. That's amazing. So how many are you making a year? Well, I was making one every nine months for a while there, uh, like a baby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> impregnate myself with song ideas, and then an album would come out screaming nine months later. <laughs> But um, then I, doing that meant that I was releasing albums in kind of uh, odd times of the year, which I found fun for a while. But now I'm settled down to putting them out in the um, fall or late summer. Like I just put one out last Friday called Away We Go. And um, I'm going to try to settle down and put out one a year in the late summer okay. for the next few years. Although this year I accidentally made a, a holiday record without planning to i just last december i started getting really wistful and nostalgic and i wrote this holiday record which was uh, a, a shock i <laughs> i tried to do it about five years ago and i failed and i don't know the muse just kind of popped up and 
I made one. So anyway, this year is an exception. I'm putting out two records, one in, uh, I just put out and then a way, uh, winter party comes out in November. Well, and, uh, we have been enjoying listening to both of those. The fact that you put out, um, that you're well putting out a holiday album, we were really excited about that as a family. Yeah, I thank you. I'm excited about it too. Um, it's uh, like I say, it just kind of like came together in this really funny, magical way. I just was so, I don't know, kind of overcome with this warm feeling last December and, <laughs> and it just popped out. So <laughs> ideas can be funny that way. They, some can, yeah. you know, they need time to just linger and chill. Yes, exactly. And what I really love about my state of my life right now is I can allow that to happen when I can just wait. I don't have, you know, I mean, I love my bandmates, but I didn't like having bandmates telling me it's time to make a record or whatever, um, which didn't really happen that much. I'll, you know, we only made a record every four years in the president's really. So um, there wasn't a lot of pressure, I guess. But, um, you know, I don't know. I just like being letting the sort of inspirational um, vibrations be the leader on that scheduling kind of stuff. So Totally. I mean, yeah. it, it can be intense to be, you know, pushing a certain idea for a certain date. I'm, I've wanted to be there, but I'm, I'm in that boat now where I have a lot of deadlines for all these different fictional projects and um, I'm excited about it, but at some, you know, there's also that part of my brain that's just like, well, I don't want to do that now. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I know. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, I've got a great licensing company in Portland called Marmoset that I love. They were pitching me on doing some custom stuff, you know, for commercials. And, um, I don't know, I just want to license the library that I make from a place of inspiration. I did, um, actually work on a deadline and make music for commercials and movies and licensing for many, many, many years. Did you? And, yeah, oh, yeah. I have an 800-piece library that um, I have out there of really weird electronic e everything from country to kind of twisted metal. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's on the Getty website. It's a pump. It was Pump Audio, but Getty bought Getty Images bought Pump Audio, so now it's a Getty thing. I'll yeah, have to check that out. Up. Yeah, I've had that up for many, many years, and um, I did custom work for a long, long time. Lots of demoing for you know big corporations and commercials and stuff like that. But I kind of burned out on it and uh, decided to um, move on. So I'm only recording and writing and singing when I feel like it now. Nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, me and the kids were listening our way through Away We Go, and I had asked them to pick out their favorites. And uh, my daughter's favorite is banana bread. Oh, yeah. And I, I got to say, that one is awesome. I thank you. That one I can credit to my dad, partially, because he wrote it. He wrote the chorus, and I think the first verse, um, and I didn't find it until he passed away about three years ago. And I, sudden, and I found it in sort of a weird stack of scraps that I inherited somehow. And he and I had written a few songs while he was alive, but I'd never seen that one. And oh, wow. there it was. And so I just got inspired, like I said, and kind of channeled my dear departed daddy, who was a big country music fan. I gave it kind of a, you know, kind of a country feel, but kind of a barbershop quartet feel, too. Yes. Totally. <laughs> yeah. 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 I want to make a video for that song, and I'm working on ways to do it. I, I bought a bunch of bananas and tried some stop motion <laughs> stuff, but it got really messy. So I don't think I can do it that way. Plus, I was <laughs> wasting a whole bunch of food. So. I got to work on an alternate plan. Maybe uh, try your hand at some claymation. Oh, gosh. I don't have the patience for that. I think I'm going to do – I do very crude animation. If you see any of my videos, like more moles and bird in an airplane suit. And then there's a new one called Mr. Cloud. Um, I do this really crude kind of A, B, A, B, back and forth animation that I really enjoy. So I might do something like that. Um, I got to figure it out. I got to start – drawing and planning and stuff like that that sounds fun yeah but i love that song it has my dad's dark sense of humor <laughs> you got to appreciate a good dark sense of humor 
Yeah, well, if you grow up on a farm, you you inherit a dark sense of humor because there's a lot of hard times, but you got to laugh or you'll go crazy. So did you grow up on a farm or was that with No, my dad did. Okay. Yeah, in the he was born in 1921, so he grew up a uh, you know, depression era. Oh, wow. On a farm in Missouri. So he was, he uh he has that kind of like, you know, morbid silly sense of humor. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so, and my son's favorite was Unhuggable, and part of it was the title. He really liked the idea of something being unhuggable. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was inspired by the Okie Dokie Brothers. They are a really talented duo, um, and they make these great DVD CD combo packs where they do something like walk the Pacific Northwest or Pacific Crest Trail or put their canoes in a river and just go, or they've, you know, they do all these outdoor things and they turn them into a suite of songs and a movie and their production value is amazing. And I was That's watching awesome. one they did about uh, a river trip and they ran into this kind of weird prickly dude that lived in a shack in the middle of nowhere. And it gave me the idea for uh, writing a song about char- some characters that are unhuggable that you want to you know and then i thought as a kid you know you go to the aquarium and you see that urchin and you want to just like <laughs> love it but you can't love it you can't love bats and you can't love boa constrictors and all these things so uh yeah gave me, and then they ended up singing and playing banjo on that track the okie dokie brothers that's awesome yeah so inspired by and supported by the okie dokie brothers <laughs> i love that name yeah they're great so, I, sorry, what were you saying? Oh, this, they're good people. I encourage people to check them out. And you've been touring around for Away We Go recently, right? Well, no, I just started. It came okay. out on Friday the 12th, and I played. I took a three-month break for uh, summer. And I just started playing again uh, yesterday, so I've actually I'm actually only done two shows. So I just did a show at noon today, and that was my second one. So, oh wow! So I'm just starting the quote unquote tour. Yeah. Nice. Do I sound weird? I'm walking from room to room. Nope, you sound good. Okay, good, good. <laughs> I had to get some water. Nice. I'm uh, I'm jealous that you have the setup that you can walk around in. I'm uh, I'm hammered in here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I won't walk around out of respect. For <laughs> it's all good. Um, and I, the art on your albums is just so whimsical and awesome. Everyone, it's part of the enjoyment for sure. Yeah, that's Kate, my wife. I mean, you know, I say it a lot, but I would not be making music like this without her inspiration. I mean, that art. The whole time I was doing the presidents, I had this voice in the back of my brain saying, well, congratulations, but you're not done. This is not what you're supposed to be doing with your life. And um, no matter how hard I tried to not listen to it, that little voice was pretty persistent. So I kept searching on the side for whatever it was I was supposed to be doing. And over the course of many, many, many trial and errors and years, it got simpler and quieter and more innocent but I still didn't have a vision for it. And then I saw Kate's art and I just said to myself, I want to make music that lives in that world or is from that planet or whatever. What a cool moment. Yeah. So I did not even knowing it was kids music. And when I listened back to it, I suddenly realized like a giant cartoon light bulb going off of my head. Oh, it's kids music. I'm supposed to be making kids music. So then I dove in. And uh, so it's kind of cool because I didn't decide to make kids music. I just have wanted to my whole life, but I didn't know it. I didn't see, I didn't really see my purpose. That's so, so um, that's intense. Yeah, it is very intense. It's like and now, and then when I, that's why there's so many albums. Cause when I look back over my uh, huge catalog of songs and little ideas and unfinished stuff and stuff that wasn't working, but I didn't know why, it's because it was supposed to be kids music, but I didn't know that. So I was like, well, this song isn't working. I don't know why I'm trying to make it all kind of, you know, hip and sexy, but it's just not working. <laughs> and it turns out the hip and sexy part was the part that was holding me back. So um, even though it was the source of 
you know, my greatest achievement. It was also kind of the thing that wasn't really me. Um, so, yeah. That I must get- have been a really um, intense thing to just kind of figure out. I mean, you know, to be, you know, in the president's but have this voice that's, you know, saying this isn't quite what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, that had to have been like kind of a tough voice to have present. Yeah, it was because I felt like the wet blanket, you know. I was the guy saying, eh, could we just not tour and have everybody come to Seattle? <laughs> <laughs> or my other one was, could we just not promote the record at all and see what happens? <laughs> which is what I do now, basically. You know, I Those two things, which I fantasized about doing from the beginning with the presidents, I'm doing now with Casper. So I don't tour. And when people contact me from you know Texas or New York or whatever, I say, well, thank you so much for listening to the music. Uh, you know, I'm super happy that it's working for your family. And sorry, but I don't tour it because I did for 20 plus years. And now it's your turn. <laughs> so you tour. So people do. Sometimes people show up from other states and they fly into Seattle and see me. And it's pretty great. So, That's awesome. Yeah, it's time for the fans to go on tour. <laughs> <laughs> That's like how I pull the holidays. If you want to come and hang do the holidays with us you come here because i'm not packing up all my all the christmas stuff and going anywhere you guys have to come here yeah yeah because i'm originally uh my husband and i are originally from new jersey and uh we uh booked it to seattle the first chance we got and then we've, we've been here about 10 years now oh yeah okay new jersey i like new jersey i dated a girl from somerville new jersey okay yeah for a long time she, we were in Boston when we were going out, but yeah, I used to go to New Jersey a lot. That's funny. Yeah, I'm so I'm my husband's from in, um like the southern South Jersey farmland kind of deal, and then I grew up in northern, you know, like right on the other side of the Hudson, basically like the Clifton Paramus area. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there's there's some parts of it that I miss, but I I love it out here. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I mean, I've traveled all over the world, and every time I get off an airplane back in Seattle and I breathe that air and I feel the moisture in the air and the sparkling water and the emerald green, I'm just like, oh, this is better. You know? Totally. Well, I, and, um, you know, when we moved out here, uh, I had never been here before. I just knew somehow that Seattle was where Jamie belonged. And uh, so we drove across the country and we were driving across the country in February. So we were just passing like all these storms and, you know, all this snow. And then we got into the Seattle area and this is late February. And that's when the daffodils are blooming. And I was just like, this place is like Neverland. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it kind of is. It's funny, you know, a lot of the inspiration I... I moved back from the East Coast right before the presidents hit it big. And, you know, I woke up one morning in Boston totally sick and not feeling good and sad and lonely. And I was like, what am I doing here? I live in the greatest part (laughs) of the country. Why am I in Boston? So I just bought a van and drove the long way home. (laughs) A lot of the president's uh, songs are totally born out of the sensation of remembering Seattle, coming back to Seattle and experiencing it after a long drought of, you know, not having that beautiful, uh, rich, natural thing to sop up with my brain. So, (laughs) so yeah, it was, um, and I bottled all that into those songs and that's the debut record basically. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, so Seattle figures heavily into that. I didn't that know that. Thing. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great out here. And I mean, and I'm always telling my kids, too. It's funny, like, you know, as parents, I'm always, you know, like, reminding them. It's like, you know, do you know how lucky you are that you get to see the water and the mountains on the way to school every day? Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy I, it. <laughs> I know, and if you hit that spot on I-5, the... Uh, you know, the I-5 bridge thing or whatever, you can see the Cascades and the Olympics at the same time. Yep. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> totally. know, there's so many views I look at when I'm around, going around town where I go, ba, 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 ba. like, even if I just walk down to the end of my street and look out, go up to uh, the water, I can look out at the Olympics and I go, ba, 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 ba. totally. 
Well, I had this moment um, shortly. We were about two years, I guess, living here, but we were starting to get settled in. And, you know, my daughter was a baby and we were living in Queen Anne. And I was driving home from the Benroya uh, Opera Hall where she had like this, you know, baby music class. And my route home took me past Pike Market. And I totally had that bah, 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 moment. It was like, yes, this is awesome. Yeah, I know. You get a lot of those around here. Mm -hmm. So, yay for Seattle. Yep. Best city. I know. <laughs> so, um, with how do you manage your ideas as far as like when you when you get one or how do you do you write do a lot of like, you know, handwriting, you write stuff down. You know, I know how like my ideas work. You know, I can get one vacuuming, I can get one doing something, you know, on a hike, I get, you know, inspiration comes from all over the place, but it can be challenging well, to grab the ideas or remember. Yeah, I, I only get inspiration when I'm vacuuming on a hike. So <laughs> it's very specific. <laughs> so you can just kind of flip that switch. Yeah, I go out there, I bring a vacuum, I'm just out in the wilderness, just picking up pine cones. <laughs> uh no, mine are, mine are uh, really kind of from a lot of different places. You know, some of it is going back over old ideas and realizing, oh, that song was supposed to be a kid's song, and I just have to take out the naughty bits and and straighten it up. Uh, other times it's uh, old songs, like public domain songs, um, you know, old uh, country music, old prison songs, work songs, um, call and response chants from the 1800s. Those are a big source of inspiration. Um, what else? Like uh, little kids will say things that are amazing, and I'll co-write with them. Um, I'll co-write with some friends. My wife and I co-write a lot. She's She'll say something, you know, like in the Beatles, Ringo is the guy that said, tomorrow never knows. And uh, it's been a hard day's night. And they were all like, whoa, those are good song titles. Let's go. Uh, so Kate is the one that walks in, you know, from gardening in the rain and says, I'm too dirty to love. And I'm like, that's great. <laughs> she hears me tuning up a ukulele and says, my flea has dogs. That kind of song. So, yeah, she comes up with a bunch of great stuff. And then uh, it's just a matter of, you know, taking a little audio snapshot of every time I pick up a guitar and play something that feels fresh, I just record it. And then I have thousands of fragments and so if i'm doing the dishes or cleaning my room or taking a nap going down for a nap or something i'll just put my um playlist in itunes that has thousands and thousands of fragments on random and just see what you know grabs me and it's a lot of times stuff that i totally don't remember making up even but there there it is it's me singing it so and that'll that'll jar you know new ideas or you know lump the our big one of our big hits in the president's yeah. lump was like that. I found it on a little micro cassette player full of ideas. Yeah. I don't even remember making it up. It was just the chorus, but I was like, I was cleaning my room and listening to it, and that thing came on. I was like, whoa, that's cool. That's weird. So I wrote the verses, and if I hadn't recorded that little bit, I would never have written that song. So wow, yeah. I'm just hold on to your little bits, people. <laughs> that would be good on a t-shirt. Yeah, hold on to your little bits. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I I might actually, yeah, that might happen. Okay, that one you can, you can anything I say on here is, is yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, and uh, so, and you, you self-publish all your albums, right? I don't know if self-publish yeah. is the right. Term. No, it's true. It's right. I have a publishing company and I do it myself. And yeah, that's the other aspect of this. That's a dream. Uh, when I was quote unquote unsuccessful, which I actually figured was successful. Um, I, you know, booked my own shows and played in the subway and recorded on a four track and put it on my, you know, made little cassette albums and sold them out of my bag at shows. And I thought, Oh, I'm totally set up. This is totally sustainable and something I could do the rest of my life. And then the actual success came along and, and changed all that or, or erased all that. But the Casper thing, I've gotten back to that. So I'm, you know, run my own studio and I engineer and I master all the albums and I publish them and I, uh, you know, am a record label and I distribute them and I book my shows and run my live sound myself. And it's a total 
it's a total uh, one man DIY. So <laughs> that aspect of it is a dream too. It's just like you know, in Seattle, the music scene in Seattle. Even when I was a teenager, I got the sense that it was all about um, don't wait around for validation. Don't wait around for somebody in charge to tell you it's okay to be creative and do your thing. Just do it and make it happen and literally do it yourself. I know it's become kind of a cliche, the DIY thing, but it's a real thing that yeah. really made the scene come to life on its own and um, eventually spawn some awesome music that captured everybody's attention but on the way to that um you know people would just rent a hall and put on a show and there'd be three punk bands and there'd be somebody taking five dollar bills at the door and it would work so that's got that infected me i just felt like that's the right way and so it feels super good to have gone through the whole machinery of the major label and all the mess and you know all the complications and all that stuff and now to be back uh, running my own show is just like very relaxing and peaceful. Oh, that's such an interesting journey. Oh. Like, whoa, that's my phone. <laughs> oh, I don't know who this is. I get so many. I get so, stop ringing phone. I'll stop now. I can't get it to stop. Wait a minute. I don't know how to get it stop. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> that's what I would tell marketers. <laughs> That's nice. Actually, I do a whole routine where I pretend to be a baby, but I won't do that here because, you know, you can't hear the other half of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and That's then a- I yell at my mom, and then I pretend to be the mom. I'm like a baby. I'm like, hello? No? <laughs> yes? Yeah. Okay. Hi, let me hear my mom. And then I put the mom on, and the mom's like, hello? Yes? No? <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun. It sounds fun. I figured they're calling me, so I might as well get some enjoyment out of it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I'll have to keep that in mind next time I I, I get I get a teleprompter. Yeah. It's pretty fun. For the first 10 or so times, it's hard to keep a straight face, but then you get kind of used to it. But you got to get your own routine down. There's an amazing series of recordings by this guy, Jason Batchko, out of Chicago. And he had a house that had a string of previous owners that – he got um, phone solicitations for all the time. So he made up voices for these characters who used to live there, like the Reverend Tom Sidon and all these other characters. And he would go into these characters, <laughs> keep the people on the, and he had a recording thing so he could record it off the phone, but he would keep the people on the phone for so long while being so random and weird. He would keep them on by saying, no, but I'm really interested in what you're selling. And then he would go off on some weird tangent and make them sing and do all this kinds of stuff. And then they would be like, okay, I got to go. And he'd be like, no, 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 I really want the pager. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah, it's so good. Jason, Pagers. everybody check that out. I'm definitely, that sounds, that sounds very funny. Yeah, anyway, where were we when that, that silly phone rang? Uh, um. Oh, DIY. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, I think yeah. I kind of was on my way to finishing that up, but it's, uh, you know, it's just another aspect of the sort of, uh, I don't know, like uh, big giant bell curve of being, you know, a, being sort of anonymous to super famous to back to a certain level of anonymity that I love because I get to return to what I feel are some very solid, sustainable roots, which is the DIY thing. So well, that's cool. I mean, and I would imagine that, you know, you're able to appreciate it as much as you do because of, you know, that crazy journey that you had. Oh yeah. And having had it, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't not want to have had it for sure. I mean, so many weird moments, you know, like so many meeting, so many, such a weird, random list of famous people and um you know like having a business meeting with madonna was ridiculously amazing and you know like weird wow al, weird al and i are close friends out of the whole thing which is really nice um and you know standing next to little richard more times than i can count uh just you know i could i mean that's just the tip of the iceberg I go on and on but there's just like you know floating around in that atmosphere puts you in the strangest <laughs> strangest juxtapositions and that part was hilarious 
So I yeah. love that. Yeah, no, that's, that's crazy. Well, and it yeah. must have, I would imagine that it, it was, I mean, it had to have been overwhelming. I mean, you, you that was like, you know, you guys were just huge that, I mean, that just, I know. we were, we were sandwiched in between Madonna and Janet Jackson on the top five or whatever on MTV. Uh, wow. <laughs> that's quite a sandwich. <laughs> we're being on my honeymoon and 95 and turning on MTV in the little bungalow and, and they were doing a countdown and there we were in between the two, like, you know, superstar divas. And I was like, what? <laughs> How did they put this dorky little song in between these? What song you know, was it? Uh, it was Lump. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The first, I think that was the first uh, video, first single. So, yeah, weird stuff, man. But um, again, good times, you know, fond memories. Loved it. Loved it and loved being done with it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess I would call that um, eating, uh, getting a cake and eating it too. Yeah, exactly. I, I always mean, try to find a use for cake. that saying. What's that? I said I always try to find a use for that saying. I mean, yeah. sayings in general have always fascinated me. And I love, like, you know, what's good for the goose or what's good is good for the gander. Like, those little, I just love that. So I always just try... Yeah, I love them too. I love the origin of those things. You know, like, uh, mind your P's and Q's? That comes from old English pubs where there were often fights, and that was the bartender's way of saying, protect your drinks, your pints and quarts. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Yes. I love that stuff. Yes. That's What's like, that called? Is that entomology? Yep. Or is, it, is entomology the study of bugs? No. <laughs> uh <laughs> I think no, it's yet it's the study well the study of words. Words, entomology. Yeah. I love entomology. So do I, yeah. You it's, can quote me on that. I love entomology. I never <laughs> yeah. Quoted. I need, I need a book about entomology, actually. Will you write one, please? <laughs> it, it might have, you know, a, a wizard's uh, obsession with it. Let's yeah, see. there you go. I like it. Yeah. Gotta have a wizard. A book where it's all in sayings that nobody knows yet. You could create a whole world made up of uh, new sayings. Oh my goodness, there's the phone again. Where it's Oh yeah, here we go. You ready? Hello? I'm sorry? This is Chris. Hi Chris, this is Nick and now now providing the sound tomorrow up in Silver Lake. Oh, yeah. Great. Hey, do you mind if I call you back in just a few minutes? I'm actually recording with a podcast right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were a telemarketer and I was going to mess with you <laughs> on the podcast. But you're not. You're somebody I need to work with. So um, let me give you a quick call back. What's your number? Or actually, you know what? I have it on my phone. So I will just call you when I'm done with this, which won't be too long. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Chris. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. See, sometimes it backfires. <laughs> I can edit that one out. No worries. Uh, no, I don't think you should. I think you should leave it all in. Here, wait. Let me write this number down. This is important stuff, kids. Always write the number down. All right, I got it. Okay. All right, where were we? Um. Oh, yeah, you need to write a book about uh, where there's a world where you invent new sayings. Yes. That's it. Like, it's all, like, uh, in... Saying, I don't know. I'm not a writer. <laughs> well, you write songs, so yes. Oh, I guess I am a writer. You wow. are a writer. Cool, man. I've always wanted to be a writer. <laughs> Me too. Now I am. Well, I like the saying idea. I mean, so I've been, uh, the, the project that just went live last night for the contest is called The Shadow Bears, and I, I've been making up words for spells, and that has been so much fun. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, little kids would be good to collaborate with that. Every song I've written with a little kid has some weird, like, like there's a new one on Away We Go about an ice cream man, and it part of it, said, the song goes, and my song goes, toodle bop 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 toodle, toodle bop 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 toodle. Toodle bop 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 toodle bop 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 toodle bop 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 toodle. I could have never written that on my own. That took a little kid, you know? I dig it. Totally. No, I the the consistent advice I get from my kids is you got to put a magical creature that talks to your characters 
They'll be like, is there a creature that talks in it? And I'll be like, no. They're like, why? Why wouldn't you put that in there? And it's like, you know, I'm really starting to question it. Like, why haven't I done that? Yeah, why isn't that in every novel, every John Grisham novel? He's mm-hmm. one of them. Just, yeah, just insert magical talking creatures in all of them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty Shades of Grey with a little <laughs> fucking rat. <laughs> I feel like Seth MacFarlane would do the puppet in that movie. Oh, yeah. That'd be great. Right? Actually, that movie would probably be way... Yeah, maybe they're onto something. I was like... Cause I, never, I never saw that movie. It's too naughty for me. I mean, I'm just a little... I'm just a kid. <laughs> I only watched 15 minutes of it. It was terrible. Yeah, but which 15 minutes? Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, ho! Oh. <laughs> sound like John Lennon there for a second. Oh, but wish 15 minutes of home. <laughs> okay. Well, what, yeah. So I, can you tell everybody where they can find out info about you and your, your albums? Yeah. Go to the rolling stones.org. <laughs> no, don't, don't go there. Um, go to <laughs> baby pants, and that is sort of the clearinghouse for all things Casper Baby Pants. And you can see videos and you can listen to some songs using the player at the bottom of the page. Or you can kind of link to iTunes and other places where you can buy downloads or you can buy CDs off CD Baby. You can also, some cool stuff you can do there is you can read my little descriptions of every song, uh, the origin story for every song. There's a page called Song Stories, and that's kind of fun to do and there's lyrics with um the chords above the lyrics for free download so if you want to play the songs at home with your kids you can do that on whatever instrument you choose and um yeah stuff very lots of stuff (laughs) Stuff. in fact there's there well that's what i call it there is a tab at the top called stuff and that's (laughs) pretty much everything is (laughs) um and then as far as uh for the local seattle listeners to bring their kids, you have some dates coming up? Yeah, uh, lots and lots of shows. Sorry about the clicking noises if you're hearing that because I'm calling up my uh, my uh, shows page here on my website. So there's, gosh, tomorrow I'm doing Everett and uh, Bremerton. Saturday I'm playing at the Outlet Collection, which is formerly the Super Mall. I don't know. I'm playing at a Super Mall. Um, I'm, playing <laughs> I'm picturing a cape. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing in Shoreline on Saturday. Uh, Sunday, I'm playing at Blodell on Bainbridge Island. Um, and then at a dentist. A dentist wanted to put on a party for his patients. So I'm <laughs> there. Uh, the big one, though, uh, the 23rd, Tuesday the 23rd, Kirkland in uh, Juanita, at Juanita Beach Park. That's a big, big show, and I love that one. And then Thursday the 25th at Hiawatha in West Seattle. That's another biggie, big, big, big. I play for 90 minutes at that show. Oh, so wow. It's a double header. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then, you know, you can just keep scrolling. There's tons of shows for all you uh, national and international listeners. Uh, you can scroll all the way down to the end of the year. And so you can plan your trip, your tour <laughs> to Seattle to see Casper Baby Pants. Nice. So Shoreline Saturday, What? where in Shoreline? Uh, ding, 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 ding. Hold on. I'm going back up here. No, I mean, I can look it up too, I suppose. I suppose you should. Uh, <laughs> celebrate Shoreline at Cromwell Park. Oh, very cool. Yeah, 145 set time. We will be there. Okay, free show. <laughs> nice. I try to make all my shows free. Well, there's some ticketed, but you know. But, but, nothing- but like 95% are free. No, that's cool. Well, it's a great, I mean, my, my kids are older now. But as far as like, you know, those few years where it's like, I just need to like fill the day and get them tired. It, it, it's great. You know, it was really, really super cool to be able to dive in and they could just dance to their music until your, to your music until they got all tired. Yeah. Well, that's one of the many services I provide. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we didn't really even get into the fact that the, I mean, the, another aspect of why I'm super happy making this music is that it is not just about me writing a clever song and promoting myself or the idea of my, you know, uh, act or whatever, but the purpose is to make something useful, something that parents can use in the car or at home to either alleviate boredom or take care of a situation where everybody's crammed in a hot car in the summer and they're all hungry and tired and they've got to pee and they're mad at each other. 
you should be able to put in one of my albums and have it transform the energy in the car and kind of unite the family. So I'm really trying to keep the parents' aesthetic in mind as I make this stuff so that when it's put on at home, it's not an occasion for the family to disperse to different parts of the house, but more to come together and spend time together and really enjoy the same songs so they can build memories of, of that connection. So uh, that, I mean, that, above all, is like, you know, why I'm super excited to do this, because I have a purpose that's not just self-promotion. Well, and I mean, it, it's, you were definitely that for us. I mean, we, your music has been a big part of it. And it was, you know, my first, it was my son's first, like, outside concert when, you know, the first time we saw you guys, saw you play. Yeah. And um, as far as like, and it's enjoyable for my husband and I to listen to it as well. So it's like we all listen to it together. Yeah, that's my that's my purpose. So that's nice to hear. Yeah, I mean, I have to like it. I'm a grown up with, you know, mature uh, aesthetic <laughs> palette. So um, and I have to play these songs over and over <laughs> and record them and mix them and master them and blah, blah, blah. So I have to be taken care of. So that's kind of my uh, control for is this okay for a grown up? Because I I have to love the songs. So. And you are a grown up, so I am not. I'm a kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, and as far as like um, the Freddie the Fly, that was one song that like I was like, hey kids, let's listen to this again. This one's awesome. Wait, Freddie the Fly. Which one's that? Um, I think that was. Am I? I might be. Oh, oh sweeping broom. Ah, uh, yes. I call it Freddie the Fly. Yeah, well, that's funny because I have another song that's not even recorded yet called Freddy the Fly about that fly. <gasps> really? He yeah, it's kind of like when the Beatles wrote songs about, Car you know, like, I told you about strawberry fields. You know, like they're quoting themselves. I like to do that, too. So that is a song called Sweepin' Broom, and I think it's on Hot Dog. And I'm working on a, yeah, spinoff for Freddy. Oh, that's cool. I got to yeah. say I'm excited. <laughs> Good. Well, that's... <laughs> That's renewing my excitement to finish that song, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, the beat in that song was super fun. Oh, thanks, yeah. I like that. That song, I have no memory of writing it. It just sort of fell out of the sky. It's funny. <laughs> it was one of those ones where it didn't make it on a couple of records, and it got forgotten. And then I was listening really? to some songs that had been shelved for previous records. And that one just stood out. Like, wow, why didn't I put that on a record before? That's amazing. So I didn't, you know, I, I remixed it a little bit, but basically it was um, not messed with too much. So, yeah, I don't remember making that one up. It's just, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, inevitable. So I guess I have one more question. And it's uh, kind of what led you to writing Small Bird on Away We Go? Oh, my God. That song, what, an, what, a, what a journey. Oh my goodness. I wrote that song before the first album came out. Really? And, oh yeah. So we were in Hawaii and on a little trip with the presidents and the first album was about to come out and I was working on videos in Hawaii. I did a song for uh, a video for the song um, Island Hop um, in Hawaii. And Katie and I were in our hotel room and a bird came into our hotel room. We were on like the 15th floor and it walked around and was this little white bird and we named it goober and goober was just walking all over the place and so we started writing a song about goober and <laughs> katie started it and she's like goober can you hear me goober can you hear me and so i wrote the whole song blah 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 and then i used to do test families back then where i would send 30 or 40 songs to about 25 or 30 families and get feedback like you know what's working what's not working and and Weird Al and his family were one of my test families, and he sent back his feedback with all these notes on the songs. And then when it got to Goober, he's like, great song, but I think you're going to hear from Pete Townsend's lawyer on that one. And I was like, what? I don't know what to talk about. I'm not a big you know, Who fan, but apparently it's the exact same melody and everything as Tommy. Tommy, can you hear me? Oh. Katie didn't realize when she wrote it that she was basically ripping off the who. <laughs> and Weird Al saved me from a potential lawsuit. And Go so Weird I just, Al. And so I completely deconstructed the song and rewrote it. And it was still Goober, but it was Goober, can you hear me? You know, it's the, the melody of the new song. 
but it didn't sound right and goober was too weird and then it turned into like i did like five different versions where it was like uh little bird red bird you know black bird brown bird i i couldn't settle on and finally i just settled on small bird because it was fun to say and uh and then the song and then recording it and it turned into this like little rock opera with this kind of almost bohemian rhapsody breakdown you know we will not let you go um it's got that no 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 <laughs> thing in it. so anyway the process of getting it to the point where i could record it was epic and then recording it itself was epic so that song has waited through 10 albums to find its spot and wow. so that's the I think that's the longest any one song has waited to finally find its spot, you know, make it, make it, make the team. <laughs> Persistent and, little bird. Oh my goodness. I just couldn't give up on it because the original inspiration was so dear and cute. And I just, I don't know. I, I just couldn't let it die. So I just kept going. Well, small bird and a holiday, the holiday item in one year. It's I know. It's kind of a big deal. Big, big moments. Year. Yeah. Well, Chris, thank you so much for taking the time and coming on the show. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate anybody who's interested in helping me uh, spread the word because, again, I have no plan. <laughs> Zero plan. The only plan I have is to answer the phone and check my email and say yes. So thank you very much for asking. Oh, definitely. Well, that was good stuff. And pretty much wraps it up for today or tonight. Again, with this, I know. Go to Twitter at me, Bettingfield, or Too Many Words Pod. Give me some love. Reach out. Make sure you go to inkshares.com and look up the Shadow Bears. You can pre order your copy there and help Rebecca Clark and I reach our goal of 750 by November 1st. And then we'll get published and birds will fly in circles around our heads or at least one can hope back to the romanticizing anyway uh reach out to the show reach out to me check stuff out and a big thanks again for uh to chris for coming on the show and to you fine people for listening and if there's animals listening you are also fine until next time